We are, have become a, a central place of um, supply and aid to our people. Uh, from the very beginning we have been doing daily daily supplies our church was damaged you can see behind us uh, it looks okay on the inside but on the outside uh, sorry on the outside on the inside uh, the columns have been ripped about a foot out, uh, 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 off the ground and so structurally compromised we've been using the church as a warehouse you could say we've taken the blessed sacrament out um, and now it's just uh, being uh, storing gear we're currently in the process of shifting all the gear from uh, the church into uh, these uh, cargo containers so that we can get structural engineers to have a look at the church. Um, we have been uh, serving our people uh, with the, the immediate assistance uh, just to survive. We've been trying to help our people survive, literally survive. So uh, we have uh, been giving them water, of course, uh, food, uh, uh, children's, elderly, men's and women's hygiene products. We've been um, one of the big needs that we had uh, without electricity because it was a good uh, a good uh, a month a month that we were out of electricity and almost a month without water um, we supplied some 80, 80 uh, generators to our people through benefactors and we were drill delivering them and, and trying to help our people out there now the big need is housing um, so our people are, are poor they're simple um, they are hard working fishermen this is a fishing community. Um, some of them are slipping through the gaps when it comes to uh, 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 government assistance. Um, some of them don't have insurance. The houses are destroyed. Um, I have at least a list of 50 people who are, who are either living in tents, living in their cars. It's now, I'm telling you, six weeks, seven weeks that they've been living like this. Um, living in their house, which maybe, let's just say there were five rooms. Uh, four of them have been, like the roof is completely torn off it. They're in one little room which is left and because of the heavy rains here, mould has entered into the walls. Mould is coming up through the floor. Some of them are sleeping on the ground. They've got wet, uh, luckily it hasn't rained recently, but there are some um, very difficult situations. People just don't have anywhere to go. There are some tents going up. The government is starting to help with that. Um, but it really has been um, an endurance of our people and their faith has been strong. Um, but we really need uh, some help. I've lived here all my life, which is 69 years, and I've went through a lot of storms, but not like this one. Usually we would have time to evacuate. This time we had to come back home because our reservations were not uh, being held up because of the major of the storm, so we had to be forced to come back home, and we spent Hurricane Ida in our home. What was that like? Uh, it was devastating. Uh, my daughter and I spent the most worst by ourselves and uh, we found ourselves uh, saying our last goodbyes. But knowing that God is always with you and he is there for everyone. And so we prayed hard for ourselves and for a, a lot of other peoples that were suffering the same thing as we were. The help that we need, uh, we've started a GoFundMe. Uh, which is um, under the GoFundMe.com uh, um, website. Uh, help Dulac rebuild. There's a there's a, a slash between help Dulac and rebuild, and um, we're trying to raise money for campers to try to have people uh, have a suitable place to, to sleep before winter comes. We're also helping on building building uh, repairing people's houses and trying to get. Um, uh, volunteers also to come down to our church uh, using our multi-purpose uh, building as a, as a dormitory style we're giving out we've been giving out uh, daily meals to our people and continue doing that doing that as well my home is basically all destroyed uh, part of my roof the addition uh, was safe enough for us to be in but the older part all the roof came out I had a son who had knew that we were spending the hurricane together ourselves by ourselves so he kind of laid down in one of the bedrooms there and uh, the hurricane was so bad that it blew the, raw, the roof off and it woke him up and he came to our aid at that time just by steps and the roof got blown on the other side of the street. A typical day for us has developed as the weeks go on, the needs have changed, but immediately for the first five, uh, four weeks, every day, so we were doing this for um, uh, from Monday 
through to Saturday. So six days a week, we would uh, get here at 8 o'clock in the morning, 8.30. Our volunteers would uh, prepare. Supplies would come in from all over the states, different people, just voluntary grassroots people coming to help. They would bring the materials to the front here. We would take it into the first three rows of the pews, just dump it in there, you could say. And then uh, during that, before 12, we would try and sort as much as we could. At 12, a line of people would come here, right? In this place here, there would be meals. Um, people would, be, would give out uh, hot meals. They would go round and then back again, we would give them supplies, what they would need from 12 until about 2.33. Uh, we would end with prayer, of course, and um, at the same time, we would be going out, visiting our people, delivering, um, delivering uh, generators. Uh, at times, we had benefactors for gas because we're all on generators. Um, I can't explain to you the, 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 the carnage that there was in this whole town after the, the, after the hurricane. So, you know, we couldn't buy anything because all of the stores up in town were destroyed. The banks were destroyed. The gas stations were destroyed. To see the, the gas tanks, all the, the pumps all pushed to the ground. So there was nothing within at least two hours that we could receive stuff. So all of our, um, we had with a group of benefactors and friends come in from Lafayette. Um, co co constantly uh, supplying our needs and then we would give it out to the people. A typical day for me is to wake up and pray that I'm still alive and pray for others, be thankful that I'm, uh, we made it and then I get through starting my days to fill out female applications, do what I can, salvage the clothes that we have tried to sell, salvage, try cleaning molds, washing clothes and don't even have time to eat right and stuff like that but um. one of the problems that we've been suffering a lot from is that um, even if someone does have insurance they've had to wait for the insurance um, uh, uh, adjusters and inspectors to to look at their house make a decision give them some kind of means of like economic means of rebuilding but the problem is is they're saying don't touch their houses until then that, that what a lot of very few people realize is that the rain in Louisiana is very heavy and so when when it does rain it pours and the mold our people are living with mold up to their necks at the moment and these people the, the very few that do have insurance are now struggling because they can't even touch their house they're watching their house mold it's it, it complete right off because of the mold now because they're waiting for the insurance so you know our people are strong in faith and they're good they're good spirited and they know how to wait and they know how to be trusting God but you know it's um it, we're in a very difficult situation where the immediate needs, uh, small communities like ours are helping. If I, there's a cry to the government that I can possibly do now, is that at least in the structure of the government process that I don't expect them to be able to help every individual, like to know everyone's needs, but at least to help people like us help them. Small communities need the help of the government to be able to help these people. And they shouldn't be expected to try to help them individually at an immediate response, but we need that help to help them. Uh, and that's why we're trying to do it ourselves because we haven't seen that help yet. I have only flood insurance. I have no uh, wind insurance. So I'm only depending on the help that I'm going to be receiving from FEMA and any other assistance that we'll be getting. We definitely, any kind of uh, community outreach groups that are there that like to do um, assistance and aid to people, we need volunteer help to come down here. Definitely, if there are a, a, a benefactors out there who are looking for a good cause to help, we still need a lot of help. You know, these campers aren't cheap. Our people are in need. The GoFundMe help do like rebuild would be an, an awesome way that they could also assist us. So I can guarantee that the money will be used. I've made a vow of poverty as a friar, so I don't, I can't, I can't handle, take, or accept any money myself. But these, uh, these um, uh, online giving uh, means are a very good way of doing that. We, I'm waiting day by day for FEMA to come and uh, look at my assessed property. A Louisiana benefit concert will be held to benefit the victims of Hurricanes Ida and Laura. The concert will be Sunday, November the 7th at the Cajun Dome in Lafayette. The concert is called the Ragin Country Crawl and tickets are available at RaginCC.com.